A musical festival for all ages. Soul Fest of Rome. Stay tuned. We'll be right back after this. Your life is filled with opportunities to show the world you can take charge. It's waking up each day with a mission. It's working each day toward a goal. It's choosing to rise. It's charging forward with a purpose. It's changing the course of your life and taking charge of your future. If you're ready to be a Take Charger, enroll at Georgia Highlands College today. Welcome to Community Watch. Greg. Good doctor. How are you? I'm here. I'm doing okay. Well, you're looking relaxed. You're looking comfortable. You know, Summer must be uh, treating upon you us. well. <laughs> it's definitely upon us. Yes. And it's almost, I don't know, it's almost three degrees cooler here in the studio than it is outside. Which is three or four, maybe. Which is a change. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, I know that the topic today is uh, an event fairly fairly new. I mean, it's, it's like the third or fourth fourth year, but it's an event that that you've been very pleased about, excited about. It is. I mean, I think um, Soul Fest. We're talking about Soul Fest. Soul Fest uh, is a musical festival, uh, really for all ages, families. And I'm excited about it because I think it allows us primarily as an African American community to create agency for ourselves here in Rome, you know, have an economic impact here in Rome, uh, which says we're here and we contribute to this community. You know, Rome has a great uh, arts and culture environment about it and for us to be able to contribute to that is very exciting for me. Well, um, when I first heard about Soul Fest, I remember thinking, that's such a, an obvious thing. Why are we just now doing this? I mean, we, I mean it's, it's a great idea, but it just it surprised me kind of that we didn't have It's one of those things like, like, really? Yeah, of course. Right. <laughs> uh, but um, we'll be talking about Soul Fest today. We have uh, Jackie Jenkins who mm -hmm. will be joining us after the break. and. Uh, Stay tuned because you'll need the information about this event because it's something you won't want to miss. So don't go away. We'll be right back after this. Eva Marie smoked 12,000 packs of cigarettes over 15 years. She quit, and now there's a new lung cancer screening that could save her life. You stopped smoking, now start screening. No matter how much you've smoked, early detection could save you. Talk to your doctor or learn more at savedbythescan.org. Welcome back to Community Watch. We're very happy to have with us today Jackie Jenkins. Welcome. Welcome back, I should say. <laughs> Thank you. Glad to be back. Um, so, tell me, tell me a little bit about Soulfest, and I and I guess uh, you can you can help too, mm -hmm. Mr. Shropshire, co-chair. So I know a little bit about it. Um, tell me a little bit about what it is and and what the purpose of the event is. Soulfest is an event for our family, families, uh, adults, children, and all to come out and enjoy festivities with music, live bands, and s such as that. Uh, the purpose is to enjoy yourself. Well, that's good. Mm -hmm. That's good. And now, but the financial underpinning of, you know, we want people to come out and have a good time, but, you know, years ago, we, uh, we remodeled the Kelsey A. Cott Burrell Historic Center, mm. Community Center, and it hosts uh, about seven 
a variety of 501c and nonprofit organizations. So it is a fundraiser to number one, maintain a historic building, but also to help with the funding of those programs in that building from the different organizations. So the funds that go directly back into the community in some form or fashion for the most part. So it's a, it's a, an event for the family, but it also has the purpose of raising yes. some money. Yes, yeah. and also for the upkeep of the building. So I guess, uh, which if we go, because that building is a historic building. Well, let's talk about that yeah. building a little bit because that's sort of the yeah, it was a, the motivation. Yes, it was the main colored school at one point. So it was a school doing desegreg doing segregation. Uh -huh. And for years it was just abandoned and left and just, you know, just going to the wayside by a lot of old buildings. And uh, years ago the city received a grant and they was able to refurbish the building and you know, retrofit it to bring it up to code. And it's been the house of about five or six historically uh, black organizations like the 100, the NAACP, the Martin Luther King Commission, the uh, Delta Sigma Theta Sorority, uh, the Mega Psi Phi Fraternity, the Rome Historical Society, and the Rome um, High Color Reunion. So all those organizations operate out of that building as a community center providing uh, uh, activities for a variety of youth and programs. So it's sort of like a central hub of headquarters for a lot of the uh, African American organizations. So that building is kind of being used once again in a different format to provide, you know, a, a place for the African American community to kind of operate out of. And it really is a gorgeous building inside. I, it is. Uh, I'm always impressed when I'm there. Um, the floors are gorgeous, uh, wo uh, wooden floors. and yes. oh, hard wood Original. Floor. Yeah. Original yeah, still floors. Still original, yes. And I, don't, I guess I've been in every room, but I know that there are several rooms that are preserved as the classrooms that they, I guess, originally were. Well, it, we've actually have changed since then. Uh, we now have an elevation house also operates out of oh. our building. And so then the uh, Rufus Turner room, which used to be the old kind of showroom of the old school. So we do actually have another organization that's in that room that operates and they work with a, a great cause they, uh, they actually work with. So, But it's, uh, it really is an impressive building. It is. Um, and so I, the, the cost of the building to upkeep it, and I guess just to pay the bills for <laughs> For electricity and things, I mean, just the the heat and air in that building. Well, not only that, but it's an old building, and so you know, as as you know, when you're dealing with a historic building, there's a lot of things you just can't change, and so you try to make it work, and so it's always in constant needing little things done, you know, to keep it up. And for instance, uh, just the roof over years, you know, you have to, have to replace roofs, the roof and things of that nature, which are astronomical with a building that big, yeah. and all of that. But just the heating and cooling of that building because it is so old. Uh, it's not like it is you go into your home with very well insulated and things like that because you got those uh, the same windows and things of that nature mm -hmm. but uh, it, it costs quite a bit to maintain that building but not only the building but the, it helps the indirectly also indirectly with the programs a lot of the organizations yeah. and so uh, you know it's so so the, those things most of the things most of the service out of that building are free to yeah. the community but it's not free to host them. So the um, the cost of the upkeep and the bills, all that falls to the organizations, organizations that are there. Yeah. yeah. Um, and I, I know not all, but I know some of those organizations at least, uh, and, and perhaps all of them that are involved there, have their own, you know, uh, fundraisers and and they're raising money for their own events yes. and and uh, projects mm -hmm. and and so they don't have a lot of extra money to pay for the building upkeep I'm sure of yeah. course not <laughs> <laughs> you're trying to raise just making money. things clear yeah, yeah you so you know, like it costs a lot just to run the programs that each organization right. has you right. know and so then then when you throw the expense of the building on that you know it does make a difference so um, Soul Fest hopefully serves that purpose. It does. And um, so for no other reason, people need to support Soul Fest 
to support all the great things that are going on in that building. Correct. And all of the, and it's not just in the building, because all of those organizations reach out into the community Actually, and do mm. great things in the community. So it's a, it's a, uh, an investment in the community when you invest in Soulfest. It really is, not only that, but the building also serves for a place, uh, let's say you wanted to come and uh, have a meeting or some kind of training session. So it's, it's a community center. Which I have done. Which you have done. <laughs> so, it's, so it's open to the community. You know, we have a process, but it is a place where people can come and actually do some workshops, training, and things of that nature. And so it does serve more than just those organizations through our programs, but it is also a resource for the community. And we do get quite a few people that ask to use the building, to come in and use the building for a variety of things. And so it really is a, a sense of home. Uh, I know for me, as a member of the 100, it is a sense of home. Mm -hmm. And it's like home to me because I attended it, the building that we were well, in. Well, now, see, I didn't know that. Yes. I had a home room, at, as a matter of fact, where the 100 is, was my home room. Really? Mm-hmm. Well, now, see. So you went to the color school? No, <laughs> I went to Maine High. <laughs> and that's part of it, too, that yeah. history, because, you know, that building, as long as that building is operating and people are in and out of that building, the history of it can really never die. Because um, as you know, we are losing a lot of our history as some of our elders, ladies and gentlemen are passing on. Some of those stories are not being captured. And that building serves as a testament to, you know, because yes, we've had an African American president. Yes, we've made a lot of progress, but desegregation and segregation is not so far removed. Mm -hmm. And so uh, sometimes we kind of forget um, some of the some of the baggage that we have as a country and that building serves as a testament to you know yes we've made progress but there are still there is still a lot of work to be done mm. so it must be well i'll i'll ask you i won't assume what yeah. it is but uh, the restoration of that building is that that must bring up all kinds of feelings it does it it has some old memories and it has good memories now because it's still ma mainly the same as it was when I went. Uh -huh. Just a few changes. Um, and was that was was there a, a another building as well, or was it the whole school was that one building? It's the other parts. We had Main Junior High, we had Main Elementary, and then we had Main High School, and then we had what we called the shop where they did woodwork. So the, the building that we're talking about is, was the high school? It was the right? middle school. It was the middle school. Mm -hmm. But that was years later. Jackie yeah. wasn't born in this original. <laughs> I went in 68. I was. I, I'm older than you think. <laughs> <laughs> As a matter of fact, I'll be 65 on the but when it was a <laughs> But when it was a segregated school, you didn't attend it, did you? No. No. So that one building is actually has a generation yeah so you know it became mm -hmm. part of Maine but uh that was during my mother's days yeah. when it was called Rome Color High School yeah and then later yeah. was changed to Maine High School uh, but it must be great to see that building uh, restored and and also being used in such a great way. Yes, instead of just sitting, standing lonely. Yeah, yeah. Yes. So, um, I got to tell you one of my best features. We got to talk about sofas, but one of my best features, uh, one of the best features I love about the building. At the far end, we was conscious about leaving the water fountain in there. It doesn't work, but just symbolically, you know, the thought of colored water. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? So we left that piece in there because it's, I mean, to me, it's just so symbolic of how far we've come. But for our, for future generations, you know, there used to be a thing where we, I couldn't drink water out of the same water fountain as you. I mean, it sounds silly today, yeah. but that water fountain is a testament that we really did have laws that made that the law, yeah. you know, and you could be punished and, and jailed and mm -hmm. even beaten a lynch over drinking from certain water fountains. So to me, that's just one of those pieces, even though we've upgraded the building, that just to see that, it always just brings me back to the reality of that, you know, people lost their lives over simple stuff, such as drinking out of the wrong water fountain. Yeah. 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 Well, uh, we are not far from our break coming up, so we're gonna talk about some of the details of the event 
coming up that you won't want to miss. So don't go away. We'll be right back with more after this. a short trip or a long haul. Estimated time, 47 hours. They will beg. You're hungry? I'm happy to provide. They will plead. Deep, Deep fried butter, butter on a stick. But whatever you do, don't wimp out. Now you're talking. Make them buckle up. They can't hurt. Remember, safety first. Cheese curls. Ah! Second. Are you orange? Welcome back to Community Watch. We're talking with our guest, Jackie Jenkins, about Soul Fest, which is coming out. What is the date of Soul Fest? August the 3rd. August the 3rd, mm -hmm. which is a Saturday. Saturday, yes. Uh, and what, what are the, is it, it's in the park? It's in Ridge Ferry, Ridge Ferry Park. Mm -hmm. And what time is it on that day? Well, the gates open, I think it's early as 10, but the, the music act started at 2. So th there, there are some activities that are going on mm -hmm. early, but the actual music starts in the afternoon. Yes, yes. It's two o'clock. Okay. Um, well, let's hear about who's coming. Who's coming to Soul Fest? Our main headliner will be Frankie Beverly and Mays, which is old school music, and then we have uh, the Infinity Show Band. We also have uh, something for the soul, and we also have Tara Shabri and the Seduction Band. The Seduction Band. Yes. That sounds a little. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and Maze is uh, M A Z E, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. Right. I remember. And I'm gonna be honest. Uh, this is uh, the fourth year. But that's huge to bring Frankie Beverly and Mays to a venue such as Rome. That, that normally doesn't happen. They yeah. normally are you know, in the big cities like Atlanta, Chicago, mm -hmm. the major cities. But the opportunity to bring uh, such a well-known artist, artist and, and a band to Rome, you know, it was just, it was very, we was very fortunate. Yeah. I mean, because this is a internationally known travel, still have a huge following. Uh, does quite a hundred shows a year still. So we was very fortunate to be able to get Frank Beverly Mays. And me being a history person, African American history person, what I really love about Soul Fest, um, you, you and Jackie will, would know about this, but you know, Rome used to be on what they call the Chitlin Circuit. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it was back in the day before all the interstates, you know, all the major acts came through Rome. Yeah. And the Chitlin Circuit was all the major black acts, the Al Greens and people of that nature, James all of those Brown. bands, James Brown, they came mm -hmm. through Rome, Georgia, on their way through Chattanooga. Yeah. And with the interstate, the Chitlin Circuit sort of died. And so to me, Soul Fest is sort of, it's almost like reconnecting that spirit of old, great, old, great African American music, bringing it back to Rome where it used to be featured. And so for years, we've never had those type of artists coming to Rome. And so now I see Soul Fest, not just this year, but going forward, bring that back to Rome, where Rome used to have that, that black music uh, uh, lure that we've lost with the interstate and things of that nature. So to me, I see it as a rebirth almost yes. uh, of the new, I ain't gonna call it the chitlin circuit, but of the new music circuit <laughs> for African Americans. Well. Uh, I'm guessing too that even in its fourth year, Soul Fest has begun to get kind of a reputation because I, I think the first three years were successful and busy yes, and yes. well attended, and they were and growing each year yeah. and doing well. Yes, and I counted. I, I should have counted at least four groups, three, uh, four, four. four. Mm -hmm. So the music starts at two and continues until? The last act, Frankie Beverly Mays go on at approximately, I think, seven, seven to nine, or seven to nine around that time, or eight to 10. I think, no, 10, I think it's eight to 10. But uh, from two basically to 10 to be live music and bands. I mean, not, you know, to be live musicians and actual real bands playing. So I, I, I appreciate that. So, uh, Folks who attend Soul Fest, are they, you know, the, do they bring picnics or, they, or is there food there to buy? I mean, that's a long time to be out there. 
So we have vendors on site, and we and they are also able to bring their own food baskets. Uh, I don't know if you can mention their own bottles, but. They're allowed to bring their own coolers, but you can't yeah. cook out there. You can't barbecue right. at the park, yeah. but you are allowed to bring your coolers. And as Jackie said, we will have food vendors there as well. So people can purchase food if they want. Um, several food trucks will be there. But a lot, I'm going to be honest, a lot of family bring their, their coolers. We have a tent area where people can have purchase tent spaces. So it's really an old-fashioned festival. Uh, yeah. Well, that, that sounds great. And... This has got to be with some with a group like Mays. We're talking like two hundred dollars, mm -hmm. easily in Atlanta. Yeah, easily, easily, <laughs> but not in Rome. Not in Rome. <laughs> no. So, so one twenty-five VIP and sixty general admission. All right, sixty general admission and one twenty-five and one twenty-five for VIP. So what is the difference? With VIP, there is a secure seating tables and seating arrangements uh, that does include free parking. Uh, includes two VIP vendors, so you know, for as people don't have to walk as far, and uh, like the free parking for VIP, and general, and it comes with tables and chairs. So when you when you go on to get your tickets, you go on to get your tickets. Mm -hmm. You can have a specific table and chair up front to the stage on the and the tables that set up there. Everybody else in general mission, they're allowed to bring lawn chairs and things of that nature. You can't set up tents in the, in that area, but you can bring your lawn chairs and your coolers beyond VIP. So, um, general admission sixty dollars, VIP one twenty one twenty five. So, uh, for a for an all day or almost all day music festival with some impressive names performing, that's pretty good. Yeah, that's pretty good. That's and I'm going to be honest with you, uh, I wouldn't have seen something for the soul the other Wednesday night. I know Infinity Show Band is great. Rome has been, uh, we've been able, we've seen Infinity Show Band a couple of times, and they, mm -hmm. they just always perform a, put on a great show. Mm -hmm. Something for the soul is very impressive. I really? have to admit, I was very impressed by Something for the Soul. And of course, we know Frankie Beverly Mays would do what they do. But I, I believe we have a very strong and entertaining lineup that people will enjoy that day. Yeah. So, uh, is there a, I mean, is there a limit to the number of tickets that y'all plan to sell, or is it just as many? Oh no, we uh, we're we hoping we, we sell out. We we've based on Rome history, we know we can sell a quite a few tickets. You yeah, know, we have uh, different events in Rome that we know we have the capacity. So no, anybody, we we have plenty of tickets to sell. And where do folks get those tickets? Uh, they can go online to uh, soulfestofrome.com. It's www.soulfestofrome.com. Or they can go to www.bigticket.com uh, slash events slash Kelsey Acott Burrell Center slash Soulfest. That's a long one. Yeah. But yeah. they also can get them. <laughs> but they also can get them. And really for local people, the best way to get them so you don't have to pay the service charge is to get them from any organization in the building. So the one, so you peep from the 100 black men, uh, the Deltas, the Makers, just about any historical black organization in Rome, somebody will have tickets. And so we, tickets will be very available. Oh, they can reach out to Greg Swapsha, Bill Collins, <laughs> or myself. That is true. Yeah. <laughs> and it's uh, uh, the first Saturday in August. First Saturday yes. in August. So it's re it's re really folks need to be getting their tickets soon. Yes. 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 <laughs> yes. And we also have um, the Courtyard Marriott is the host hotel. Oh. So if you go online, you can get that information. But there is a package deal that uh, you can get the room at a cheaper rate if you uh, get one of the Soul Fest rooms. So we have we working. We're trying to work with the communities. And one of the things that we're proud of this year, uh, it's not official yet, but we are going to do. Well, this part is official. We're going to do a can a food drive, a can drive and toiletry drive, the goal is to work with the community kitchen and the Davy shelter so that we can actually not just have a great musical festival, but also pay it forward with other nonprofits that do great work. We recognize that there's other nonprofits in Rome that do great work. And so that day we're asking people who come out, bring a canned good or, you know, just bring a canned good. We have uh, 
We'll have bins for people to put their stuff in. Or also you can bring a full size toiletry item, shampoo, soap, uh, anything, toothpaste, things like that that the mm -hmm. Davy Shelter can use. And our goal is to work with them to be able to the next day be able to make a, you know, take them a large deposit of stuff. We're hoping people will bring a lot of stuff and we can make a donation to them. So it's not just a music festival, but it's really a way to give back, not to just that building, the people in that building, but to other people in the community as well. Well, that makes sense because the organizations in the building are all community focused. Yeah. So um, this event truly is community focused. Yeah. Um, the, the money that's raised will help that building, uh, pay the bills for that building, but it'll also help those organizations continue to do the work that they do. And um, so it, you're helping the community and having a great time, yeah. both. It's not bad, man. That's perfect. That's perfect. <laughs> it's not bad at all. Um, and, and we're excited about it. We This is just the fourth year, and we hoping it will continue to grow and become one of those shows we've interviewed. How long have you been here? Yeah. You know, so uh, we, we, we're very proud of it. We think, uh, as it say, it's also a co contribution to the community. You know, economic impact. We want to have a stake here in Rome, we want to be able to say that we help contribute to the great culture of Rome. Mm -hmm. And so Soul Fest is one of those ways we can do that. And we like to bring other artists too as well, because we had Zap and uh, the Gap Man, Dan it, and mm -hmm. Zap. So we like to bring others yeah. if we get the participation, so. Um, you know, I, and I don't know if you've kept any record of this, but this seems to me the kind of event that will draw people from far away. Well, we're hoping to, to get people as far as Birmingham, Chattanooga, and Atlanta. Because Frankie Beverly, Frankie Beverly and Mays, uh, three know. weeks ago, was in Atlanta, and their tickets were selling for as high as $600. Yeah. So at 125 we are hoping to bring in people from out of town. Quite a, we're hoping that we get a lot of out-of-town guests, yeah. which is people spending money in our community. Yeah. Right. It so doesn't live here, so oh, yes. Right. So uh, <laughs> really, <laughs> the... The, uh, the event is going to benefit an untold number of businesses and yeah. so... Uh, it, heads and beads, it, I've learned. It really, <laughs> it really means uh, a lot to support it. Yeah. Um, so that's what, that's what folks need to do. Now we're coming up on another break here in a few seconds. When we come back, um, we will give you again where you can get your tickets, which you need to do uh, probably soon. Uh, so stay with us, get something to write with if you need it, and we'll give you that information when we come back. and high school students drop out every school day. That's a line of desks more than four miles long. We can keep students in school. Visit boostup.org and take the first step. Welcome back to Community Watch. We've been talking with Jackie Jenkins about Soul Fest, which is coming up on August 3rd, first Saturday in August, and it, gates open around 10, music starts at 2, it's great bands, uh, you really want to be there, and you can get your tickets on, is it uh, www.soulfestofrome.com? Yes. yes. Um, and also, uh, Bill Collins will, will sell you a ticket, you'll see him everywhere, right? So. Yes. Um, and you might see Jackie Jenkins and Greg Shropshire too, but um, get your tickets soon. VIP or general admission, either one, great deal. This is not an event that you want to miss. Um, and to see the Mays group. Mays Frankie, featuring Frankie Beverly, I mean, that is going to really be a blessing for Rome. I mean, yeah. we don't have artists, very seldom we get artists that big in Rome. Okay. Thank you so much. All right and uh, get your tickets. Thank you for being with us. We'll see you next time on Community Watch.